All right. So good morning again, everyone. Welcome to the Mind, it's really the High Vibe Tribe online meetup group and business networking group. And today we're here to listen to our guest presenter, Lori Buchanan, who is going to help us. She's a champ in the social media realm. She's got huge numbers, and I think I'll share those numbers. Hold on one sec while I share those numbers with Lori and tell you a little bit about her. And then, um, all right, so Lori's going to talk about how she grew and maintains her social media numbers. And she's an award-winning author, and she's written two books. Uh, one is called The Business of Being, and the other one was Note to Self. And Lori, maybe you can hold up that book <laughs> for everyone to see. Mm -hmm. But Lori's going to share with us how she uh, built a private practice with 1,200 clients. She's got almost 15,000 subscribers to her blog and website. That's huge. Her blog has had almost getting close to a million views. She's at 900,000 plus blog views. Her personal Facebook page has almost 5,000 followers. Her author page has almost 3,000 followers. Her Twitter account has close to 10,000 followers. We're ready to hit some big numbers here for her. Instagram is getting close to 2,000 and her LinkedIn for business only is 1,000 followers there. So um, let me tell you a little bit about Lori. <laughs> she considers herself a cross between Dr. Doolittle, Nanny McPhee, and a type A Buddhist. <laughs> That's a good one. She's a voracious reader, award-winning author, kindness enthusiast, and an unabashed optimist. Her superpower is listening between the lines. Red licorice is her kryptonite. Embracing the belief that life is an expression of the choices we make, she's a teacher and student of purposeful living. She's the author of award-winning book, Note to Self, A Seven-Step seven Path to Gratitude and Growth, and Lori, you may have already shown that book. And the other one, which she's sharing today with people on the call, is The Business of Being, Soul Purpose in and Out of the Workplace. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can visit Lori at Tuesday with Lori, L A U R I E dot com, which I will spell that out on the video so it's, there's no mistake as to how to get there. So, Lori, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing all your good stuff with us. <laughs> so, why don't thank you? Thank you for uh, having me. Yeah. We're going to jump right in because I think there's going to be a lot of questions. And as I said last week, I'm going to start out by just making a few bullet point business statements. Just things for you to put on the back of your mind, keeping in mind, hmm, how would I leverage that on social media? And then I'm going to ask you some very pointed questions that I want you to write down the answers to. I'm not going to make anybody, you know, say what the answers are. So be brutally honest, even if the answer is, I don't know. Because once you answer... These questions that I'm going to ask you, not the bullet point statements, but the questions have every single thing. If you can't answer those, you're not going to be able to grow your social media. So you're going to want to pay really close attention to these. And I'm going to give you my own answers. You can kind of go, oh, I don't know the answer right now, but that helps me. I can kind of see where she's going with this. So a couple of the statements here. Most people want what they can't have. Two. Less is oftentimes, not always, more. If you're in business to make a killing, not a living, you're in it for the wrong reason. Don't work for money, have your money work for you. Do some of your work pro bono, free. You have to decide how much of that you wanna do for free, but that is vital, that is critical. And just to be clear, a client is someone who buys service. A customer is someone who buys product. A person can be both. Let's say that you're a hairstylist. When I go get my hair cut every five weeks, I'm a customer. When I buy her shampoo or brush or conditioner or something gel before I leave, I'm, also, I'm a client and a customer, I'm both. So just know that, do you have clients? Or do you have customers? Are you selling service or are you selling product or both? But that's important, how you're going to approach people. Okay, so those are my bullet points, just things to think of on the back of your mind. Now, your social media platform, your following, your tribe 
is not going to grow unless you can answer these questions. What is your brand? Write that question down right now. What is your brand? And write your answer. While you're writing your answer, I'm going to give you mine. My brand is Puck, P-U-C-H, positive, uplifting, constructive, and healing. That is vital to every single thing I do. My words, my actions, everything I do is Puck. If you were to go out to Tuesdays with Lori today, and it's Tuesdays with the plural, Tuesdays with Lori today, my post today is all about that. So you might want to go out there and take a look. So most of you on the call are in that kind of a world, a world that's upliftment and giving, not taking. So that's, you need to know what your brand is. You also need to be able to describe your brand and you need to be able to do this with concision. So each week when we meet here, some of us take 30 seconds, some of us take seven minutes. Concision and brevity is everything, whether you're writing it or whether you're saying it. So let me give you my formal, my formal description. Working with the whole person, I help people turn intention into action, bridging the gap between where they are and where they want to be. That's 25 words. You need to be able to, to do this in under 50 words, whether it's on your blog site, whether it's in person each week, to go on and on and on is not a good thing. The next three things are critical. Whenever you're speaking, whenever you're putting out a, a, a meme, whenever you're writing something, whenever you're speaking, you need to answer three things with whatever it is you're saying. What is the point? Why does it matter? And who cares? <laughs> what is the point? Why does it matter? And who cares? So I'm gonna use Cheryl Murphy, who's not with us today. She's in London, I think. I told her last week that I was gonna use her in a positive way. Each week when she comes on and she introduces herself, she hits these three things. Her point, death is not the end. Why does it matter? People need hope. Who cares? People who have lost a loved one. Bang, she does it just like that. She does it under 30 seconds, not speaking fast. Those aren't her exact words, but that's what I hear. What, you know, what is the point? Why does it matter and who cares? She's concise and she speaks with brevity and, cl and clarity. Now for me, my, the point of what I have to say, my little elevator pitch is people who come to me are not coming to me because everything's wonderful in their life. When somebody comes to me, they are not experiencing homeostasis, which is balance and, and equilibrium. And it might be um, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, vocationally, relationally, geographically, academically, financially. One of those things or more is out of balance. It's not homeostasis. So why does that matter? That person is now in a place of dis-ease or some people, if it's physical, disease, the real deal. Disease is just as bad in a different way. So there's disease and there's disease. And those, those are completely different things. But if you're experience either, either, experiencing either one, you're not in a good place. And who cares? For me, who cares? I used to direct my um, Facebook ads to the wrong group. Liz and I were talking about this at the beginning. She said, Lori, how do you have this? How did you find your, your tribe, your audience on Facebook? And I was marketing to people who, you know, yoga, Buddhism, kindness, that. And I, my ads weren't going anywhere until I realized that's not my tribe. People who are experiencing bankruptcy, body issues, um, relationships, divorce, that's my tribe. Once I figured out who my tribe is and started going in that direction, then my Facebook ads worked. So you need to know who's your audience, who's your tribe. If, you're, if I were um, marketing to you guys, it wouldn't matter. You're the same as me. You're, you're looking, your, your clientele, your customers or your clients are people who are coming to you with needs. Something is not in homeostasis, okay? So what is your unique selling point? That's the next question you need to be able to answer. What is your USP, your unique selling point? Write the answer down. 
Mine is this. This is very unique. I will not work with anybody for more than nine months, period. I do not want an ongoing relationship with somebody's wallet. In nine months, it is what it takes to birth a new you. A good holistic health practitioner, a good transformational life coach is looking to end the relationship, not keep it on. Is looking to, to get the bird out of the nest. That's my unique selling point. Some people are in therapy for 17 years and the, 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 the practitioner has this relationship with the wallet. That's not my purpose. Okay. And then how can you use your unique selling point, your USP in your online marketing? Okay, so I'm not going to ask you to say what the answer is, but can any of you just raise up your hand? Did you have any of the answers? Okay, how many of you are going to work? Okay, some of you know, but some of you are going to start working on your answers. So those, there's no point in even trying to grow your social media platform if you can't answer these things, because these are the things you're going to be showing. These are the things that you're going to be showing. So now we're going to get to my little, how I actually, literally, what, what do I do? I'm here in my office. I get up very, very extraordinarily early each day, and I do my yoga, and I, get my, my, I zip people in the pod. You can just go out to my website and find out what that means. It's my form of prayer. We'll call it that. I get that all taken care of, and then I get online. And I get online with my chart right here. I have a chart, and it says here, 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m., 8 p.m. That's five times. So 8, 11, 2, 5, 8 is five times a day. I'm going to go out and I'm going to post. And I'm going to post on Twitter, Facebook personal, Facebook author, Instagram, and if it has anything to do with business, LinkedIn. Those are my biggies. And I do not schedule my posts. I don't use Hootsuite or, or pick another thing. I do it myself. Why? Because I want, if somebody talks, says something to me, I want to respond. If they like my post, I want to like theirs back. If they retweet mine or reshare mine or whatever the term is, regram mine, I want to regram theirs. That doesn't happen on Hootsuite. The whole point of social media is connection. The whole point. And John had asked earlier, he said, I want three tips, but I'm going to give you two right now. What, what um, are two tips that you can take away? Consistency. You can follow me like clockwork. I like clockwork. Consistency and generosity. So for every post of mine, so I have here, you can see I, I put a little red line when I'm done. Okay, boom, boom, boom. I've got one for today. For every one post that I say something about, you know, the business of being, note to self, one of my quotes, and I do something called um, joie de vie, which is joy of life, and I also do a peace one and stuff about books, not my own. For every one I do for me, I do 20 or 30 for somebody else. Generous. Be generous. Flip other people's work. Liking is nice. Regramming, retweeting, sharing is nicer. If you read somebody's book, review it. It takes a sentence. It takes one sentence. Somebody put a year or more into, into of their life. If you buy something on Amazon, a, a screen door or a window, you usually go out and say, oh, I love this. I hate this. I got this new Dutch oven. It's all cracked. Oh, I love it. I love it. Do the same thing with the people in your, in your tribe. You know, retweet, regram, generosity and consistency. And what, what do I do? What is it that I'm putting out there? That's even more to the point. And this is where Linda Hoy over here, was, she's a perfect candidate for this. There's probably not anybody on this call who doesn't have a cell phone. Most of our cell phones have cameras. I'm a decent shot. Linda is a professional photographer. Her shots are un, uh, un, unbelievable. I, just take, I probably take 100 shots a day. I, I have a large dog. She's an Irish wolfhound. I take three two-mile walks a day, and I live near beautiful things. I live a, a spit from an arboretum, which is a tree farm. Then next to that is Kristen Armstrong Park. Then next to that is the Boise River. So I take pictures, and I, I, 
I get my get home and I look at all my pictures and I delete everything I don't like and the, the 10 that I keep out of a hundred I turn that into a meme and I use Canva C-A-N-V-A it's free it is user friendly you just go out there and you you pull in your photo and then you can say I want to put some text on it and I, I put my own quotes, my own quotes, or I might say something from the Dalai Lama or uh, Pima Chodron or pick a person, but I always brand it at the bottom, TuesdaysWithLori.com, TuesdaysWithLori.com. Wh whoever's quoted is, if it's my quote, it says, blah, 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 Lori Buchanan. If it's Liz Gracia's quote, blah, 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 Liz Gracia. But at the bottom always is TuesdaysWithLori.com. And if you're watermarking your photos, don't use your name. Don't put Lori Buchanan, Linda Hoy, Holly Scalamini. Put your website, because if people go, oh my gosh, I wonder what else she's got out there, they might not be able to find you by your name. So mine is a, 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 a copyright symbol, TuesdaysWithLori.com. And then people can find that and, and do watermark your work because not everybody is sweet, loving, kind, and thoughtful. Somebody might try to take your own, your own photo. So I, I watermark my photos with uh, TuesdaysWithLori.com. So Liz, if you would start reminding me of some of those questions, I want to get to those, or, or if somebody wants to raise their hand about something I've just said. Yes. Uh, okay. So why don't we start with Instagram? And, and I think... Instagram, I'm kind of new to Instagram in the last six months or so, and it seems to be the most responsive platform for me right now. So if you want to get engagement. And I can tell you why. Let me tell you why yours is so good. Your graphic identity, your memes, I can tell your memes from a mile away oh. <laughs> because it's the same graphic identity. You've got, your, you've got your hex coloring. For those of you who don't know, you can go out to hex colors. Hers, it, for the Athena arena anyway, there's the, the pink. And you can, you can go out to hex and say, um, so for, for the business of being, you know, you go out to the web and you say, here's my color. What are the colors that go with this? And it will literally give you those numbers. So when you go into Canva, if you don't like their shade of blue, their shade of yellow, their shade of green, you literally put in the code and you've got your own blue tangerine color or your own this color green or your own yellow. Then you're consistent with that. So typically, so that Liz, that's why your memes are perfect. You've got this, this, this hex coloring going on. You've got this graphic identity, which is a person knows it. They get to know it. Now it's rare that I'm going to use use, um, uh, not that I don't, but it's rare that I'm going to use something other than, I don't put my photo inside of something. I just use a photo so I don't have coloring around, but I use the same font, which is Laura, L-O-R-A. I like that font and I can either have it all caps or lower. If I'm going to, uh, uh, use white, which I typically do. I don't use 100% white. There's a little bar that you can drag and I drag that bar down to 70%. So it's not like Tuesdays with Lori. It's just Tuesdays with Lori and it's not shocking. Um, so that's why yours is, is so good on Instagram. But the thing is, remember, um, if somebody follows you, follow back. If somebody likes yours, like theirs. So I get these these hits and to let's see, I can't remember. Somebody said, "How do you how do you not be on all day?" Well, in the morning, I'm on for about an hour. I have my my my. I've already done my yoga. I've had my hot water with lemon in it. Now I'm on to my coffee. The real deal here, and I'm out here doing this. But the most I've, I've got my one my first tweet out or my what my my first meme out all across the board, those five things that I named. Then I go literally in Twitter, quite literally, in Twitter you go into the upper right hand corner where you can search and I type in the letter A. Anybody who's following me who's got A in their name is gonna come up. The top 10 that are returned are the people who interact with me the most. I literally go to each one of those people and retweet, not like, retweet theirs. Then I go B, C, D, E, A through Z. That takes an hour. I talked about generosity. People love that. They follow you back. They retweet your stuff. They tell others about you, and it grows. So there's one hour. That's not a bad investment. Then remember, every three hours, I'm going to go back and say, okay, now who has retweeted whatever? That Now it's down to 10 minutes. 
It's because you're into the day now. Now it's down to 10 minutes. People haven't had that much time. As we get closer to lunch and dinner, it's going to take a little bit more time. But so every three hours, I'm now investing 15 minutes. Well, I'm also between clients, which is nice. I take clients uh, three, three days a week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. People want what they can't have. Remember, um, so I don't take clients any old time. I don't make myself completely available. I schedule me into my own calendar. And so it, so eight, 11, two, five, eight, and I'm back out there being generous. I put my new, my new meme out there, but then I go and I see who, who now, I don't go through the alphabet again, but who has liked my stuff, go like theirs. Who has retweeted, regrammed, shared. I do that on all of the platforms. But you, the first one is a big investment of time in the day. After that, it's 15 minutes a pop. So by the end of the day, you've invested two hours in yourself. You've created a tremendous amount of goodwill. You've got probably 10 to 15 new followers across the board. So Lori, re, re, so when you go to Twitter as an example, re, re, say it again, repeat what you said okay. about how you're finding so you're looking people that are dealing with you. Or interacting with you okay well first of all that's in note if, if somebody has interacted with me it's in my notifications so you just right. you click on the up at the top it says notifications and you see who's done what okay I go down you starting at the beginning and I work my way up and I re do unto others what they've done to you if they liked me I like them if they've retweeted me I retweet them so that's except for the first thing in the morning I go through the alphabet that's on Twitter and most of those people have also followed me on Instagram have followed me on Facebook and have followed my website that is WordPress and if somebody sub, uh, subscribes to WordPress they from WordPress not me there's no effort on my part every Tuesday they get an email that says oh Lord it's Tuesday today Lori has put out a fresh blog so that's not from me and then once a quarter I send a newsletter to my to my distribution list um, if for some if you guys were to go out to Tuesdays with Lori not com today and don't manually uh, wait 10 to 15 seconds if you're not already subscribed this box will pop up and say hey would you like to describe if you put your email address in there then you're going to automatically get through MailChimp the last chapter of this book which is 365 questions it's called internal inventory questions which is perfect for a year of journaling so that's what it's, it's called a bribe to subscribe that's exactly what I teach at UW Madison give a bribe to subscribe if some if you want people to subscribe and then let them know about it hey new subscribers I just put a thing out um, this last week some of you maybe if you follow me I put Captain Jean-Luc Picard on on a meme and I said um, I am hey emailers uh, if you're on my my thing uh, you're, I'm giving away some free books uh, be checking your email. If you haven't subscribed yet, make it so. That's what Jean, Captain Jean Luc. I got like 17 new subscribers, and so and then I'll do a random. I'll pick. So do a bribe to subscribe, but be generous, be consistent, but more than anything, be concise. I love bribe to subscribe. That's a good one. <laughs> Oh, that's it's huge and it's it's not I wish I could say oh I came up with it I didn't you go to any uh, any conference about growing your 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 platform bribe to subscribe is huge give yeah. give something yeah what's a lead it's a lead magnet in the language I've been speaking here but it's more fun to call bribe to subscribe is more fun subscribe. Exactly. You're, and you're give being me another bribe. question I'm bribing you <laughs> Exactly. And it, by the way, any of you who give me your email today, you're going to be on my list. Just know that. Yeah. Okay. So, so you were talking about Twitter and um, are you wasting any time on Facebook right now? <laughs> because you don't, I, I do go out, I do go out to Facebook actually the same five times and I do my personal and I do my author and then I have a I have two perpetual ads going a dollar a day so it's thirty dollars a month so it's sixty because I have two books out there they're very successful um, but a dollar a day that's nothing I do as much remember don't work for your money let your money work for you do as much as you can in a very uh, non spendy way so I, I the same five you know those five times a day 
that would be Facebook. Now, Facebook, my personal, I try not to hit that, you know, every single time I put something with the business of being or note to self out there. I'm a huge cook. Everybody, everybody on my Facebook personal page, they know my husband too. They love Willa, our dog. They know our granddaughter, Luna Blue. So I put, you know, here's what we made for dinner tonight. This is a one pot dish. Here's where you can find the recipe blah, blah, blah. Oh, look, here's Luna Blue. Look how big her feet are. La, la, la. I don't hit the personal page all the time with, you know, uh, here's my book, here's my book, here's my book. If somebody gives me a lovely review, I put that out on my personal page to remind people, hey, I'd like a review from you. So I don't have to ask for it. So the point I'm getting to on the Facebook side, though, Lori, is that you, we're not getting a lot of exposure on Facebook anyway because we have to pay for it. So I'm still doing what you're doing, but I don't engage as much because there's not any engagement. You know, if you have, you're lucky if you get one percent reach, half a percent. Anyway. I would, I would agree with that, but you still want to be out there for the visibility. Um, right. For me, right now, Instagram and Twitter are are my top two. I, I get more from Twitter, but I like Instagram better. Yeah. Um, but th those are kind of neck and neck. Yeah. Facebook, meh. But you still get that visibility, that brush stroke of there's that name again. There's yeah. or that or that face, that face that goes with the name. Oh, that's that Lori Buchanan again. That's that Lori Buchanan. Um, and that's a that's a good thing. Visible. You can't don't discount that visibility. Somebody has to see something 40 times for them to go, oh, I think I might maybe oughta. So I just want to put make a point because Lori, I just want to kind of shore up what Lori's saying. I'm finding I'm doing a lot of Facebook, uh, social media stuff right now, not just, I'm doing Facebook ads, which is a different thing. But Twitter and Instagram, I agree, are the place to put your attention. And I never, I hated Twitter forever because I feel like it's like, you know, short attention span, you know, too much garbage, whatever. However, as a marketer, and I need to go back and engage more because I'm not engaging because this seems overwhelming, but I like what you're saying here, Lori, and I'm happy to go and do it because Twitter is giving me um, conversion feedback fast. And it's telling me, whoa, there's a lot of interest in this and it's giving me ideas as to what I should spend money marketing on fast. And I'm sharing my, and I have to say, I, I share my members, which I'm not sharing me. I'm sharing my members. I'm sharing the network. This is more of a, I'm a, I'm, this is what social media is about is sharing others and helping others. So I notice I get very high engagement when I'm doing that as well. So and it's interesting to see what people are responding to. So Twitter for me as a marketer is showing me what's, wow, where is people, where's their interest? Like fast, which I love that. And you, and you just, without saying it, you just said, there's that generosity. This is where you're doing others. And this yeah. is vital. Remember, it's, it, think about the motivation behind what you're doing, you know, and, and that's, if that's a, a huge thing, and I, I really believe that what we put out there comes back to us. Maybe not immediately, but it does. And if, if we think in terms of generosity, that is huge. And to be to be transparent, to actually connect. If I wasn't really connecting, I wouldn't I wouldn't waste my time. But this isn't even um, a spending of time. This is an investment of time. And any time I invest money, and I'm a really good businesswoman, I expect an ROI, a return on my investment. And so far, Twitter, Instagram, and even Facebook, just for the visibility, yes. And even uh, LinkedIn. But again, don't put something, I talked about this, I think, last week. Don't put something fluffy on LinkedIn. This is... Uh, bleeding edge business or, or you will be no one's going to follow you yeah so just an interesting yeah, holly, point on that linkedin stuff all right holly go ahead and ask a question oh so i, I just have a quick, quick quick question about um twitter i'm not on twitter partly just because i'm um yeah slow and slow to keep up with everything but Someone told me once that Twitter, there's some risk with Twitter, that there's some issues around 
um, people who get into Twitter and intentionally, um, I don't know, do bad things or spread bad, th I don't know. I, I guess I'm wondering if anyone else has heard that or if that's something you've experienced or. I have like not had that kind of experience. Now I do have trolls and you can really see who they are. It's, it's gonna be, at least for in my experience, and this is true on Instagram, Facebook, it's not true on LinkedIn. So Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, this is true for me. A man is either gonna be in a military uniform or some kind of, I just got one yesterday, it was FBI, uh, police, uh, and, and it's, you know, hey, baby, um, you know, I'm a blah, 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 and I just block, just block. That's the only kind of, and that's just easy, block. Who, who cares? I mean, that's, that's their problem. Um, but I'm not gonna let that, I've not had any other thing go on. And if you have, if I don't do direct message. If somebody direct messages me, block. I, I don't do that. I, I want my conversation, my thread to be visible, authentic, uh, transparent. I'm not gonna do something sneaky off on the side. Not gonna happen. Nor, uh, this was alluded to in the beginning, I think Liz uh, Gracia said, or somebody asked, no, it was Liz Bigger had said, oh, on Instagram, I'm being invited into these groups, grow your following by 10,000. If that involves money, don't ever buy a follower. Don't ever buy a follower. If somebody's asking you for money, and I'd be very cautious about um, getting into a group that doesn't involve money either. I, I, I would check it out. I would do my due diligence. And I saw down here, in the chat, I'm, I don't want to poke that button. There was some question from Audrey Denicky. Can you read it, Liz? Yeah. So that on. we can, I don't, I'm afraid if I push a button, I'm going to just disintegrate. Oh, no. No, you're good. Uh, Audrey, I think, brought up um, the topic of Facebook groups and growing that. How do you go about doing that? And, and Liz Bigger is interested in that as well. I don't have uh, my own group. I do belong to writing groups, very safe. I know these groups, you know, She Writes Press, which is my publisher, we have a writing group. Um, there are several um, gutsy indie publishers, uh, writing groups, that I only belong to writing groups out there. And so far, everything has been totally safe, um, but I don't have my own group. And I think that's marvelous to have a group. Um, I'm cautious about how many groups I join because that comes through the feed and I feel obligated when something comes through to go, you know, like it, whatever. Um, and so I try to keep my feed as clean as possible. I've noticed also in the Facebook group realm, um, it does require a lot of interaction to get people moving and um, I don't have time to try to get people moving in the group. You know, it's, I use it just as to provide event information now and welcome people into the group. But I noticed that most people that in, got, want to get invited into the group belong to 700 other groups. I'm like, no, you don't have the time for that. So what's the point? I don't know if it's like a popularity, you know, some, you, you know, you feel better when you join a lot of groups. I don't know what it is, but uh, you want engagement. And I, the one in group that I belong to that's highly engaged is people that, we met together one-on-one. -on -one. We know each other. Those groups seem to be, if you have a local group where you're friends and you're really building relationships, that seems to be working. And then if, um, I think I've noticed other people online that are big marketers uh, have big groups that are engaged. So, you know, depends on who's supporting that group and, you know, bigger concerns have someone who monitors the group. So. Anyway, uh, Liz Bigger doesn't feel like she has enough less content to start a group. So um, it depends on what, again, this is going back to branding. What's the motivation? You've got to, this is what the branding process is, is identifying your motivation for everything. That's a part of it. This is alignment with that, right, Lori? Exactly. The other, it, thing is, the other thing is, the other thing is, you know, you might want to consider Blogging now. I never. I blog every Tuesday. Never more than 250 words. It's usually much shorter. I let my my picture speaks a thousand words. I take my own photograph, put it out there, and I use that photograph. But once you start getting a following with a blog, you're seen as a subject matter expert, a SME, and you want to to have that. Um, 
to have that authority, we'll call it an authority, you want your customers, your clients to know, oh, you know, I, I can sign up for this. She's talking about probably one of my heaviest hit blogs ever was several years ago, vibrational therapy. I talked about the value of vibrational therapy, then EFT, you know, emotional freedom technique, uh, cranial therapy, reflexology, clinical hypnotherapy, not hypnosis, completely different, totally, totally different. Um, so those kinds of things, if you can speak to that, which, which you should be able to speak to if you're a, a body worker, if you're a light worker, if you're a massage therapist, if you're an intuitive you should be able to speak to it. And if you can't, you need to ask yourself, why, why can't I? So you, you could start blogging just these little short blogs. And, and you know, if you're talking about EFT, just have someone take a picture of you doing this with your hand uh, or cranial therapy. I've got to, my, my fingers are in somebody's head out there. M my son's feet are, I'm doing his feet. Those are really heavily hit. Crystal therapy, Liz Bigger, you could put out pictures of it, that. Uh, be seen as a subject matter expert. Blogging is not hard. Holly, yes. So I have another question um, in regards to that. This is great, but I've always wondered about the benefits of blogging versus a YouTube video. And I'd love to hear your opinion on that. If you can do a YouTube video, you're doing way better. I, I started trying to do the one minute ones and I have seven of them, seven of them out there now only because First of all, people would rather see than read. And that, if you do a video, that a YouTube video boosts you in the Google search like 10 times or more than a blog post. If you were to just, if you were to right now go um, Lori Buchanan, you'd get two Lori Buchanans. One is me and one is a musician. If you go Lori Buchanan, comma, PhD, you only get me. And then you can start seeing my YouTube is pretty far down because I only have seven of those one minute videos out there. But people who have like 30, 40, 90 of these one minute snippets, I think Katie who's on here, um, Katie has, she does online meditations. And um, I don't know what the length are, the shorter they are, the better they are. Um, but Katie probably, if you were to, to Google Katie, that her Google ranking is probably much higher than than mine, she may have less followers, but have a higher Google ranking because she's a YouTube guru. I am not, but yes, Holly, that's a good, if you can do that, oh my gosh. So I just want to, uh, it's hard. Comment. Sorry, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say the reason, one of the reasons that, that I have so few is when I go to do one, I do it right here in my own office. If you go see and you'll see that same painting and I start cracking up. I start laughing at myself because, you know, you see yourself, I can see myself right now and it's real. I snort, you know, and I laugh at myself and it's very difficult to get that one minute out and to cut the snorting and all that out. Uh, so I wanted, there's some comments here in the chat in regards to YouTube and, um, so first of all, um, Linda Armstrong has been going gung ho on YouTube and she's creating excellent video content. She's a good graphic designer, so it's a little more branded than most of you would necessarily do, but you don't have to be branded. But Linda says she's got 330 subscribers, which is huge right now for having started. And she's bringing in more oh, my hat is than, up. than anything else. It's bringing in her more clients than anything else. And Katie says she commits to a live Facebook video each week to lead a short meditation. And then she downloads that video and uploads it to YouTube. So if you're getting into YouTube, you got to remember, absolutely post it in a blog post on your website too. It's done. You don't have to write. I mean, if, if you know anything about SEO, you do some writing to support what the video is about, but at least it's content posting to your website. That's definitely something you know, to have something constantly moving through there is a good idea. And I, for members of my network, I've highly recommended to some of you, post a darn video. It's going to get way more exposure in that network because it's growing than necessarily your own website. So definitely have your own YouTube. Upload it to your, put. you can't upload it. You have to embed it into your website as a blog post. And if you're in the network, I highly recommend you go, that's nothing. To be a, a blogger. Absolutely. 
if you do a minute or less, you can put that same YouTube video on Instagram. It has to be 59 seconds or less. If it hits 60, I think you're out of the game. So if you can do the short ones, that's fantastic. And this is the way that we're going in the future is, is this, this theme, this, this is way more. And I'm going to be getting better. My 2019, I'm going to be doing more of the video clips where I somehow put painful things on my feet and I don't laugh at myself at the beginning. Um, I'm going to do it. So, but yes, Linda Armstrong, that's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. And I see that we're getting really close to the time. I yeah. just want to say again, if you would yeah. like to have, to, today I'm packing the books. So give me your email address today. Tomorrow I'm shipping them. If you want a book made out to you yourself, say, you know, sign it to me or sign it to Suzy Q, whatever. Um, and if you give me your email address, just to be fair, you will go on my, on my thing. You will only get something from me once every three months. But if you subscribe to Tuesdays with Lori, uh, MailChimp will send you an email each week. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. Lori, I just want to say, mention these last few comments and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, okay. So Liz Bigger says she does an Oracle card reading every week and they're usually under seven minutes. So Liz, are you getting response to that yet or is it on YouTube or where are you sharing that video? It's on YouTube and I also, then I share it to like all my other oh, social good. media pages. Okay. Um, I get, I would get, I actually, I think for as new as it is, I'm doing pretty good. It's not like, you know, blowing up, but, um, for only doing it for, I think I've been doing it for about six weeks, maybe. I think it's doing pretty good. And that That's sounds fun. wonderful. And just re, re look at your video and I haven't seen any of Linda's, so I, I don't know the length of hers, but if you can remember concision is everything, people are going to give you <laughs> a minute. If you can, I know, I don't fast you can do a reading but you know if you can somehow or speed it up you know once you do it then somehow speed it up I, I think seven minutes I probably my time is so valuable I probably wouldn't invest seven minutes just to be perfectly honest under five minutes for sure Linda how long are yours Linda Armstrong <laughs> Linda and I have a problem with editing <laughs> hold on unmute you Let me unmute you. There you go. Yeah, there she is. How long? It's, it's easier than typing. This is my struggle because I can talk a lot <laughs> to keep them short. So lately I'm, I'm getting better at doing like seven, eight, nine minutes. But like when I do energy updates and Oracle card readings, they're 15 minutes. But most of those people will watch the whole thing. Um, so it's a challenge to keep them short, but definitely you have to keep them short. Yeah. It comes back to the relevancy thing, Lori. If you have relevant and stuff would, that people want to see, then they'll watch it. I, I, I agree. It has to be relevant and you have to be providing value, but I still would honor people's time. I would, so ladies, I would get it under five minutes, yeah. four minutes and 59 seconds. Yeah. You, I'll have to say you're absolutely right because YouTube stats themselves show how most people drop off after a minute. Yep. yep. So if you don't catch them with what you're about to talk about in that minute, then it's, it's all over. Exactly. Um, and I looked at Facebook live videos and Facebook is saying, you know, oh, you've got, how many people stayed on for 10 seconds? That's their, that's their benchmark. I'm like, 10 seconds, that stinks. Really, you know, so they're giving me insights and like, oh, you've got so many people stayed on for 10 seconds. I'm like, what the hell good is that? It's an hour video, <laughs> right? So something to keep, be mindful of. And, and Linda, you did make a good point. Uh, YouTube is search driven. So if you want to get found, make sure you're using keyword phrases in that title that people care about. And for all my members, you have your report. I keep telling you, look at the darn thing before you make any video. <laughs> make sure the topic is going to get something. Okay, we got to go. And use, use in, in, in your whole big takeaway, use less verbiage and more gra one graphic, one killer graphic, not 10 schlocky ones, one killer. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Lori. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for You're joining welcome. and being here with us today.